Hello, ladies and gentlemen, how are you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. I'm in Rue, hello, hello, hello. And folks, we are giving you some more Redstone 44. Today I should chat, and who do we have here, Rang? On the left hand side in the blue, we have ourselves a bird, an alpha bird, playing Air Force Panzer. And on the right hand side in the red, we have a Sir Daniels playing Group Bez Lugo. No, I'm, I'm kind of fascinated. I guess the question today is, will bird be the word? Or will so Daniels be clipping the wings of this particular avian? Like, how does the matchup look between Fourth Panzer and Bazooka? Fourth Panzer is definitely a very good Panzer division. It's for the most part very well rounded. You have the light armor support, you have Panzer fours up the bum, you have Panthers for long range engagements, and a decent amount of infantry. It's a nice package. They're really just lacking a bit in air power and artillery, which isn't too bad. Group Bazooka is. You know, T-34, 76 spam, decent amount of infantry, decent amount of, like, sheep anti-tank. Their main problem is they don't have any good anti-tank to really deal with Panthers, apart from those two Tigers, but even then it's a bit risky. But you have the air power, you have decent amount of artillery, you just have to be a little bit more creative when the heavy armor comes onto the field. And especially in this mod, you have a lot of room to be creative in blowing up big bloody catch. Well, we are seeing the kind of standard, let's throw all our infantry in the southern town as much as humanly possible. Um, and as you might expect, it's going to be the Soviets, I think, who are going to take the early advantage here. It's just, I think, the Germans are being putting just enough to maybe kind of keep things, you know, relatively equal. For yeah. the mid axis is of, of advance, no pun intended, <laughs> be further north for the axis and just be, you know, a holding game in the south. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense, as you really do have that long-range armor advantage to Panzer IVs compared to the T-34s. Also down south, I feel like it's going to be a bit painful for Bird in the town, because there's a lot of anti-tank rifles in there, and using those 2 3 runs and 2 5 runs slash 9s is going to be a bit dangerous. It will be dangerous, but at the same time, so long as the AP... Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think, Khan? I, I was actually clearing my throat. Now let me clear my throat. I hope you don't mind. Um, but you know, as you like you said, I mean, and that was one of those things. I always feel like the reserve PTRDs, they those things are silent killers. They are they silent are. killers. They're such a good unit. Just because I mean, you have the rifles, they're disheartened, whatever. Just one bloke of an anti-tank rifle can make a tank blow a light tank blow up, which is not bad at all. You can just slap them around in the town, they make good defensive units. Yeah, they're, they're really good. And there's not going to be anything as a, as a surprise. I feel like, unless it was somehow something like the one of the infra, truly infantry divisions over here from the Axis powers, we're not going to see Shachetran Southern Town ever really go blue. Yeah, it's going to be, I mean, to be fair, Fourth Panthers is a decent amount of infantry, but it just hasn't really invested a whole lot in He's in a pretty bad position here. I mean, Sir Daniels has managed to consolidate a pretty good source in the center of the town and using that Redevka M3A1 pretty effectively. Mm -hmm. I mean, Bird is really relying on his Panzer IV now and as well as the Flak 38 to give some fire support. But yeah, it's going to be tough. And now the SU-76 is being brought in. Yeah, Sir Daniels is a very good grip in this town. Absolutely. And now I imagine those PTRDs are going to start engaging that uh, P4 as well, which is not going to be a particularly pleasant experience. Not at all. Looking up north, I mean, Bird really needs to be a little bit more aggressive up north. He's not going to be playing too heavy. Well, yes, he's playing pretty heavy in the town. He's getting three pounds of four J's. I don't know how effective that's going to be. No, no, that was that was the wrong choice there, unfortunately. Yeah, I understand getting the armor out, especially if more Soviet armor potentially being brought in. There's also some Soviet off map as well, but once the infantry go down in the town, those Panzer IVs are going to have a nasty time. And these are the J models as well, so really slow turret speed, which is not going to be helpful in the fight. I'm trying to see if that he's aiming at it. Well, he does pick off at least the M3, M3A1, so it gets rid of a little bit of recon, but I think he's got to be more concerned Eh, maybe. No, so maybe he has to be a little more concerned with T-34-76s, but these are the undergun versions. Uh, this is the low velocity 76 too, I think. Uh, yeah, but close range, it's enough That's, to kill a yeah. Panzer IV still. Yeah. So it's, it's the danger of using Panzer IVs in a town. 
much prefer to fight Panzer or T-34s at a 1.6 kilometer distance. And you know what? I think this is going to be one of those replays where, you know, I have Caster's Curse constantly. Whatever I say will be the absolute opposite. Like, <laughs> everyone who watches this video will press subscribe and give me a million dollars. Like, that's not going to happen. And, and I know that. And I know that. But at the same time, like, I don't want to tempt fate by going the opposite direction with it either. So, you know, it, it's it's a weird balance. Uh, yeah. The J is going to start to engage T-3476 down south, and transmission destroyed. But crew killed. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, the veteran C, I mean, the free self veteran C bonus is really making that U 34 pretty deadly, of course. Checking back into the top where things are only less, moderately less depressing with the blood everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think, yep, we're going to see a bit of a resurgent push as it's been hit critical massive infantry on that hill. They're going to get shoved back. At least it's not going to go very far. The, the second that they get off of that crest... Oh, no, he's not going to go off the crest, though. That, never mind. I, I take everything back. Yeah. And with all the T-3476s and SU-76s, yes, they're not great long-range type, but Sir Daniel has managed to force these engagements at closer distance, and those, like, tanks and tank destroyers are really bloody good, especially for leaders nearby, giving them extra veterancy. And one thing that's interesting is that we are seeing a Maverick income from Bird. Mm -hmm. Which I know it doesn't sound like it should be particularly bizarre at all. I mean, since you know, Sir Daniels is extremely regular the entire way through the flatline. But he's not... He's trying to hit above his weight right now. And obviously that leads to its own challenges. I wonder how that middle phase is going to go. Yeah. I mean, that's, I mean... Once we get into B phase, of course, it's when the Panthers start being brought in, and they can definitely be a rather big force multiplier up north if he uses them effectively, just as long as they don't get bombed by aircraft or artillery, which causes pretty big weakness for the Panther here. But I feel like Bird just needs to consolidate the southern side, just make sure he doesn't completely lose the town, and then try to push either over for lungs or try to get this northern hill. Yo, this northern hill is pretty nasty. I feel like you'd want to just bomb it to hell and back or call them some off map or mortar half tracks or anything really. That was a really nifty line of sight there. Oh, from the T-34, yeah. Yeah. That's like quite as a tiger, but yeah, there's, you know, decent amount of Soviet light slash medium armor. They're going to be able to knock out all the German stuff here. Yeah. Very good maneuvering. Absolutely. Very good picking out engagements. Absolutely. I was kind of a little confused. Okay, so the first material that went down the hill just got wrecked. Gotcha. Now, the SU 76s are just going to start to bedevil that, that incoming arterial. There's not a whole lot that you can do to engage them. Yeah. Like, I just have a pretty good position. He is bringing in like some Marta 3 to try and counter, and as well as a pack 40, which would definitely do pretty good in defensive position. But I, I find SU 76s would be very good in this mod. They yep. usually have decent veteran she. Yes, they have terrible armor, but 38 points, so bringing a decent anti tank weapon as well as a pretty good high explosive weapon, you can't really complain too much. I want to give you a quick heads up. There was a, an attempted bushwhacking by an IL-2 down south with carpet bombs. Uh, BF-109 might go and give his life. He's going the wrong direction. My friend, you go to the west, not the east. Yeah. He's just flying in circles. I feel like he has some sort of critical hit. Like another critical, which is forcing him to fly in circles. But yeah, we go. He's finally fallen back to an appropriate section of his lines. Well, I know when we have pilot panicked, and a, I think it's pilot unconscious, they tend to yes. have their, their daily dose of stupid pills. <laughs> well, Bird has definitely been able, I think, to stabilize us out a little bit. Of course, he doesn't have any of the flags there, which is a sad detriment, but at least Sir Daniels is making crazy headway into the town, which is good enough. I mean... Right at Panzer IV is, is in a very good position to just deny anything from moving forward, and he's very close to like actually flipping over a flag. If he was maybe to get a commander down here and like, an infantry leader a bit closer, he might be able to tip one of these flags into his favor. I'm sorry, I was watching this. The Mortar Three picked off its first target. Let's let's. I, I mean, 
very aware of the fact that the Mortar 3 has to get a little bit closer and you can see what happens when, you know, he's forced to do so. But he's fired two shots and picked up two kills, so it's really, yeah. really hard to hate that too, too much. Yeah, those Mortar 3s are essentially the fourth Panzer equivalent of SU-76. I mean, they have the exact same gun, it's just in a little check tank chassis instead of a uh, Soviet one. Also has APC, well, I believe SU-76 also has APCI, yeah. But it also has a machine gun, right? It's a nice little bonus. That's true. That is certainly true. I mean, looking down south, I have to laugh a little bit as we had the P4J that has not just damaged optics, but badly damaged optics. Oof. Which means he needs glasses with bifocals. Um, otherwise, the Strokey in that church apparently is not holy ground, at least not as we expected it to be. No. They have Panzer IV. I really like where the badly damaged optics one is. Of course, he can't spot for himself anymore, but that's a sneaky spot in that lower light, like, forest area, yeah. I didn't even really know you could, like, maneuver through this from. But from there, yeah, he can get pretty decent fire support and still be in cover. So it's actually going pretty well for Bird down south. He might be able to push the infantry out of the town. I feel like he needs a bit of artillery, like a mortar half track, to route out some of the Russians. But in terms of armor engagements, he's not doing too bad. I agree on that one. I mean, it, and it only continues to get better for him, which is really, really weird. Shooter knocked out. Okay, so the P, probably the, the fail is going to go down here, I think. Would not be surprised if he did. Turret stuck. Okay, well, that was much better than I thought it was going to go. Yeah, it's not too bad. I am a little curious why the BF-109 just allows itself to continue to get shot at by the pom-pom. But uh, Tchaikovsky is doing his thing. He definitely goes down to T-3476 and the other P-4. Gets revenge by jamming that guy's gun up quite quite nicely. Um, you know, I never really kind of appreciate how tight some of these flag lines are over here in the southern town. Mm-hmm. But I think it's going to be 1311 over here just in a moment. Yeah, he's pretty close. The reserve infantry are being forced back. I mean, Sir Daniels is ripping up some superiors to try and hold this point, but the Panzer Grenadiers are engaged in long range, and that's where Panzer Grenadiers really shine. Here we do have a 45 mil down south, giving some good fire support. Do you think he's just putting the BF-109 just in circles just to waste the ammunition on the aircraft? The air and the aircraft gun? No idea what he's doing with it. Oh, I think he's trying to intercept the IL-2. Well, now he is, but yeah. Spark! Okay. Um... Yeah, with the, you know, the Flak 38, there really should, there should really should be no way the IL-2 gets his bombs off. Yeah, there we go. Good one-two punch here. Yeah. Definitely saving his Panzer IV's life, and... Yeah, Bird, now on the 1311. He could get a 14, or, yeah, 1410 if he just gets your other flag, but... The Russian combat unit is definitely helping out quite a bit in terms of just a frontline bonus. Oh, absolutely. And unfortunately now for that Flak 38, he's revealed his position, so he's being engaged by the 45 mils, which, while they're not the best anti-tank gun, they're still good enough to engage infantry targets. Oh, yeah. They're, like, very fast. Rate of fire on the 45 mils makes them pretty deadly against infantry. And also, I believe the Panzer 4 for a brief second was shooting the Russian 37 mil anti-aircraft gun. Almost killed it, but... He did move out of the way just in the nick of time. Now I'm a little bit more amused. Take a look at the top here as before engaging some anti-tank positions. No, he's engaging the Puris. There was a half-hearted attempt to maybe move some Russian troops onto the left lung, uh, but it looks like, you know, they ran, that entire thing kind of ran out of breath. Yeah, and he's got a whole heap of infantry reinforcements being brought in, so it might... It might be enough to take out uh, Northern Forest. There's not a whole lot of good long-range Russian infantry here, so I think there's a decent amount of Panzer Grenadier machine gun support. Yo, will be a deadly push for him. Should be enough to clear out that forest, at least. Would like to see some artillery on the air, but... It shouldn't be too bad. It shouldn't be too bad, no, but I do think that these veteran... PTRS squads are going to be absolutely brutal. Yeah, he's in a nice, sneaky position here. Oh, watch this first martyr go down. There we go. The, the P4 is charging. Not a good <laughs> idea, boys. Yeah, infantry inside a building's yard is extremely hard to spot. There we go, holding fire to try and 
not be shot at here. Reopening and other well, Panzer IV getting sniped by the SU-57. Mm-hmm. I was watching to see this infantry assault and happen pretty quickly. It's going to happen in kind of slow motion. Flicking back down to the south, uh, 45 mils are engaged with the P4J, who's not to be outdone. Oh, he's being engaged by HE. Okay, yeah, that's a one-sided engagement. But yeah. a resurgent infantry push, we might see maybe the Soviets going east to west here. This is certainly the attempt. Yeah, we got a whole heap of Soviet infantry being brought in and just... Decent amount of fire support from the 45s for also have some 76mm support guns and T-34 reinforcements. I think it's be enough here for Sir Daniels to flip it back into his favor. Well, he is already. It's 1410. Yeah. A big piece that's the fact that there's no leadership on the front lines over here for the Germans. No, he really needs just a leader unit and probably... Well, he's bringing the Panzer Grenadier here actually to do that, as well as off-map artillery, which should help out quite a bit, because Sir Daniel's forces are definitely very bunched up. Yeah, we have a 105. That's going to cause more than a little bit of hassles. Yeah, but we also have a mortar half track being brought up north finally. It should definitely be able to clear up the the PTRS squads in the buildings as well as whatever the hell is in that forest because this northern post here from the Pentagon Deers, even though Pentagon Deers have a whole heap of machine gun firepower, Sir Daniel's infantry is just dug in really well. Yeah, and it doesn't help that uh, the Strokey squads over here actually no, they, what the heck was I looking at? There was a there was a group that looked like they were very, very low on machine gun ammo, but I guess that's not, that's not the case any longer. But it's been pretty back and forth. I mean, we're back to a 12-12, and 17 minutes into this match, it's pretty even in terms of points. Like, it's, it's, it still really feels like it could be anyone's game con. And you know, I think that's going to be the case until we probably get into C-Phase, but now that's not, even as I say that, I realize that C-Phase very, very similar mm -hmm. income curves. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see potential Tigers and Panthers being brought out, because I think it'll be pretty... The IL-2, I'm sorry, an IL-2 just went down and almost killed the veteran of PTRS ah. squad, and literally took out the building. So close, so close. I'm sorry, but you were saying... No, but yeah, just seeing some heavy armor out, I think would be a pretty big force multiplier up north. The major issue, though, is that cost. It is. It's pretty expensive, and, you know, even though heavy armor is pretty heavy, it's pretty easy to kill with bombers, or if you get, like, a good critical hit, you know, a sneaky anti-tank gun, you have to be smart. It certainly is dummy thick. Down south, we do have a 105 barrage to be called on. A bit of concentration, but it takes forever for it to happen. Yeah. And I'm always afraid about this. Like, the Red Storm part, like, I, I love the change about moving them off map. It makes sense. Cool. I'm worried that the artillery barrages are used very liberally. And I... And, what do you mean? Okay, well... Oh, I gotta back up again. The call-in timers, I feel like sometimes it's like, okay, we got to throw down here. And while I love the fact that it's basically going to replicate the fact that a lot of artillery barrages couldn't change in time to stuff that was on the ground. Not happening in this case, but I've seen it where players will drop it, not really realizing that the actual, you know, kill zone isn't going to be viable pretty quickly. Yeah, the Strong Pioneer is going to go down here. The Strong Pioneer will go down here, no doubt. At least we just saw it. Yeah. I really yeah. mm -hmm. used that off map artillery just down south in the infantry blob. Yeah, that's right here originally put it. Uh -huh. I mean, it might be able to blow up a T-34 or two, but I think it would be much more effective if you killed this massive blob of infantry here. Well, and that was the follow-up I think I was trying to do after I stumbled through that my first point. Is... But no, I understand your point now. Yeah. Yeah. I do like how Bird has like two leaders here now. It's definitely helping out quite a bit in terms of veteranry, but now he needs a little bit more frontline infantry. Because his infantry, I mean the Panzer Grenadier's charging is very risque. Gonna take some heavy casualties. Yep, I wouldn't be surprised if they go down here in a second. Yeah. Checking up to the north. 
fresh Soviet reinforcements means that it's going to be nearly impossible for the Germans to perfectly aggress onto this hilltop, but it's not going to stop yeah. them from trying. I mean, he's using some smoke here, it's quite nice, but... I mean, it's just trying to deal with all the Soviet infantry, and it's a lot in that forest. I mean, they have green cover on top of a hill, high ground, all of that, where Germans are being forced to come in with infantry and open ground. I mean, he, he does need some army air to help him out, but of course that's dangerous too, because there's, Panzer, there's like <laughs> Russian Panzer Shrek, the T-34, and all that nice, and anti-tank rifles as well, which just make it deadly to bring stuff onto a hill. True. But hey, it's a panther. Is there finally a panther? Oh! No. No. Where's the big kitty? Oh, there he is. I was like too far back, and I was like, okay, that's a P4H, my friend. Uh, but you're right. Big kitty is here, and... Yowza. 85 yeah. miles engaging something. Oh. The airplane on the other side of the world. Um, Over again, a puss in the lungs. Yes, you are seeing a bit of uh, some infection going from east to west here. You're absolutely right. There. And the Stromaviki Superior, so that's not going to go well. For the defenders, I mean. Yeah. Yeah, and those Stromavikis are really good in forest fights because they do have the ambush Specialist trait, which means they're much harder to hit and they're more sneaky. You know, I feel like this sticker should be like a tree. Or a branch. It should be a death's head, but whatever. Yeah, I think it's just like one of the default ones, because I believe that's the fanatical trait in vanilla. It is. It yeah. absolutely is. And then, like, the veteran uh, icon is the raider trait from vanilla. Yes. Yeah. Looking down to the south, and yes, we are seeing more and more aggression as the Strelke Keys kind of move in from east to west as well. Your leader units, as you might suspect, High on motivation, low on fighting skills. Yeah. And geez, even the veteran P-Guns are getting absolutely slaughtered. Is there that much of a disparity between the Soviet infantry and the Germans, or is it more of just the numbers game that's been happening? That's been it's really the tanks. The t the this T-34 has given fire support. It's like completely uh, devastating the German infantry here. And you know, I'd say it's not fair, but all's fair in love and war, so I've heard. Yeah. Again, yeah, the T-34 has just performed better in towns compared to Panzer Force. I mean, but it's a very good uh, defense outside the town of not one, not two, but three pack 40s, which is definitely probably a little bit overkill here. I mean, he shouldn't lose the town entirely just due to the amount of tank support he has outside it, but it's getting pretty costly just trying to secure his two central flags. Oh, without a doubt. Though, confess, I'm watching the IL-2 coming into the north, take out the, pack, the mortar track, and... Now just kind of blithely flying away as is his want. Second one to the get, I think the first Panther got killed somewhere. The first one to the north? No, he's still there. Is he still there? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Um, however, we are definitely cry crying havoc and letting slip the Douglases of war. Bombs are out. He's definitely going to die, though, between the ground fire and the Messerschmitt. No way. Okay. Oh, Messerschmitt turning stupid. You know, I think I've seen this before. Um, you know, in, in Germany, they didn't have a lot of resources during the war. They have, that's how we have things like Fanta, for example. I <laughs> yes. think the Messerschmitt has his whole... He just he just had his, his daily dose of dummies, not Smarties. I mean, that was the discount version. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's kind of a shame I didn't get the kill, but... Yeah, so Daniel's in a very good position of 59, getting that plus two bleed on Bird. Just that... Southern push is really going quite well for him. I don't know how much he's going to be able to really move up anymore down south, as Bird does have a lot of armor on the outskirts of the town. Well, he's not oh, worried about that now. We're seeing a two-pronged attack over here on the lungs. So the northern... Yeah, now the Panther G went down. Oh, damn. What was that? A side shot from the SU-76? I, I actually it was. don't know. It was. Damn. You gotta be really careful where you position those tanks, as you can see. Like, he... It's a little bit too aggressive, that Panther, and he paid the price. And now I got a Tiger, but of a uh, Russian variety. Well, another attempted push, and I imagine this is going to be sent back down almost exactly the same fashion. The only difference here is a teensy bit more 
combined arms, but I think the Russians are showing us much better on how to do it. Yeah. They, I mean, they are assisted by the fact that these Flam pioneers are close-range troops and really are rather lightly armored for their yeah. role right now, but uh, nonetheless. It's just like T-34-76s and SU-76s are very good in these close quarters engagements. And there are the Panzer IVs and the Marder Threes. It's just not as good. I mean, you do have the half tracks to be fair, which is quite nice. But with all the anti tank rifles, it does negate their use a bit. Yep. And as that P4 goes down, I mean, this entire. Yep, the entire push falls back. Yeah. I mean, that northern, like, forest is. Unless he gets, like, a big off map artillery strike, even just one more to half track, it's way too much to just try and route out. Like, Sir Daniels just has a lovely position in that forest. But the weird thing, he's got a he's got a one five zero. Well, I have it open over here right now. This shows that infantry gun shoots, so basically an infantry support gun, but he's not using it at all, which is kind of weird. I feel like yeah, I'd be trying to pound that hilltop as much as I possibly could, and then I send in all the troops. Not not do this kind of piecemeal kind of knee jerk kind of idea. Yeah, like he's taken like he's pretty heavy casualties during these small aggressive pushes. Like he just needs to drop a lot of high explosives on that hill of course but i, I understand why right? people don't get artillery because even in red storm it is more lucrative to get frontline units because mm -hmm. you want to have units on the front making sure your backline units don't eventually get capitulated but no no but i mean like yeah. he's, he's got it on the field so use the stupid thing oh he does does he yeah uh look oh, at yeah. the panther to the north see. it's been on there for a good probably 90 seconds yeah he yeah yeah definitely needs to be firing on that hill and just blowing into smooth range. I've seen another pan for as well, but I think the main thing is Sir Daniels is making a lovely push in the lungs with just, you know, some light armor and some infantry, and he's sure in that easy peasy like. Well, there is more fighting in the town, and we are going to see some... Is that a... Yep, Stoker's coming in at looking to try to pick off at least one of those Tanks, I don't think that's going to happen. I feel like that stress is going to be too much for him. Yeah. He's, gonna... He's going for the loop de loop. What? Like that little maneuver. What? And he picked off two. <laughs> it does have a heavy bomb load, to be fair. Like one 500 kilogram bomb and then four uh, 50. So it's pretty deadly. Oh, absolutely. But still, it's one of those things that's kind of like, really? Um, Looking otherwise, down south. There was some resurgent fighting. It looks like the Soviets have had the worst of it, though, as more and more accident infantry get shoved into that town. Yeah, the veteran Pandagon is holding pretty well. There's only one T-34 left yet, so if he can knock it out, I believe... I believe Bird could actually capitulate his town. Like, there's not a whole lot of Soviet stuff here. Uh, Sir Daniel's definitely been more focused up in the center in the north. <coughs> so, there is the possibility. That's true, but whenever someone says the possibility, it's kind of like, yes, technically, Bird could wait until Sir Daniels has a heart attack, but um, I don't know that that's going to happen here. We definitely see Sir Daniels has, has been definitely using his air power sufficiently. Perfectly, mm, but sufficiently. Yeah, not doing anything too crazy on the Panzer IV, which is pretty good, yeah, for Bird. But yeah, so Daniels with just you know a few defensive units down south is being is just enough to hold on to these two flags. Panther tries to get frisky as well. 85 mils is starting to go and turn put fire into that Panther, and the T6 Tiger is still here too. So it's big kitty v big kitty, and with damaged optics now on that Panther, I don't see him being long for this world. Yeah, there's definitely much more Russian guns shooting that Panther, so. I don't feel like he's going to have very good odds. And it turns yeah. out we were right. Yeah, Tiger is a pretty nasty tank. Even ring Q crewed by Soviets. Well, it's mildly amusing now we have this IL-2 coming on in with a cluster load and who really cares? I mean, like, you could drop it in infantry, but why would you want to? Yeah. How is this, like, the backup? But the Germans have taken the southern town. T-34-76 went down here, and I'm looking... 
And I'm thinking, will it be another, maybe another short kind of armor column to the south? Or is it just, let's just toss infantry in it as much as possible? I feel like Bird really needs to make an aggressive push into his town and try to, like, really secure the entirety of it. Try to get that flag near the bridge, at least. Because he needs to really, like, pull some pressure from that northern and central area. Because he's losing pretty badly there now. Like, he's been fighting very piecemeal on that hill, while Sir Daniels has managed to build up a pretty nasty force of 85s, SU-76s, the Tiger now. Yeah, I don't feel like Bird really has any chance of really getting any good territory up north anymore. No, it's actually, it's very much to Bird's kind of benefit, these motorized pioneers and these off clear flam pioneers that haven't really been seen just yet. Yeah. Though more and more units continue to be donated down to the south, which just surprises me. Yeah, but Bird is making progress, so he's got the Panzer IV and half tracks pushing up. There's not a whole lot here from Sir Daniels, there's some reek infantry units left. Maybe he can get a Panzer Shrek kill, which would be great fun, especially considering we've blown up a German tank, but the Panzer IV, so going pretty well, but yeah, it's a Tiger now, and there's an SU-57, and they have the high ground gone. Well, I hadn't even really watched the, the Tiger firing too much, but uh, yeah, you're absolutely right on that. And veteran guard squad's being brought on in as well, so he's just playing, he's, he's playing the run out the clock. Yeah, and a BA-10 should be pretty damn good in CQC. Apparently I've lost the BA-10 and I'm not sure oh, how it's, I Oh, uh, it's spawn. It. Uh, coming out of uh, southern spawn. Ah, thank you. I was looking at that. Oh, wow, there's an entire column. We got ourselves a, an, I, you know, a, yeah, we got some Italian tanks coming to the front here. Yeah. Or wannabes, the L6s. But, uh, yes, indeed. The map is starting to look more and more like a, maybe a Doberman kind of head if you look at it from the red side the little dots the eyes over there on the, on the oh, left hand yeah. bone it does kind of look like a dog it's good you know it's just it's one of those things you, you know even when there's massive amounts of death we want to keep it light here that's what we that's how we hope we work yeah uh, in red storm you definitely have much more opportunity to see um picasso map art compared to vanilla because it just goes all over a bloody place absolutely true and there's a piece of me that really wishes that people would be more that there'd be an entire subreddit inside the subreddit about just the interesting maps, but you know how it goes. Yeah. Um, Tiger asserts itself, takes onto the P4, and that might be the death of the push here. Yeah, we have a lot of P4s being brought in down south here. And a Verbovin! I forgot they get the Verbovin, which is a awesome little anti-aircraft unit, of course. I believe you mean anti-infantry unit. And, yeah, good point. An anti-tank. I mean, it's just an anti effort really. I will say in this, it's a far better anti-tank role than it is in other pieces of media, that's for darn sure. Yeah, like, even in just vanilla, I've seen Robovins just go close range against a T-34 and put enough T- like, holes into the T-34 to make it Swiss cheese. Which is pretty impressive. That means he's changed the guy's passport as well as his, his living status. <laughs> but, uh, the BA-10 in the meantime, moving up to the front. And that's the one thing about the Robovin, is that it can only engage one target at a time. Which, when you're going to get overrun by a lot of your rinky-dink scout cars, which are still nothing to sneeze at, ain't going to be pretty. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's two tigers down south. I didn't even see that. Oh, he, I think he repositioned the run up north down south, which is always weird to see when people completely reposition units from one flank to another. Because the, the gut reaction is, can you do that? Oh yeah, you yeah. can do that. You're only meant to push one lane of your units. You're not meant to, like... Reposition to deal with emergent threats. It's that's ridiculous. Exactly. You're a jungler. Stay in the jungle. <laughs> exactly, Khan. I I treat my field division two matches like I'm playing Dota. I yell at my team all the time. <laughs> never my fault. And then you scream about how someone's been nerfed, and you go from there. Like that. Exactly. That that's how that's how yeah. I started playing SD two. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh. Messerschmitt coming in, sniping the IL-2, but it did get the rocket load off at least, but, yeah. But, even though he's been pretty much losing from, like, the 20 minute point on, he has been able to, like, slap back a bit. Like, it's only a 13-11, and he is making decent progress down south, bringing it back to a 12-12. Troll troll. He isn't going quietly into the night, but Sir Daniels has such a good position in the central area, and just having... He just has, like, a better concentration force. 
Well, and I think that's the major issue, isn't it? Is that that southern town requires such a huge investment early on. And instead of putting up just like a, a mild resistance, just to hold the one flag on his side, I think Burr just fixated and he got himself trapped in a cage. Yeah, and also it can be pretty hard as 4th Panther to take that town because anti-tank rifles really screw your half-tracks and your lightly armored vehicles, which are very vital when trying to deal with, you know, trying to clear out enemy towns. Because those two free runs can be so good in clearing out infantry, but... You know, when that's an angry Russian with an anti-tank rifle, they just kind of get popped open immediately. True. True. Uh, and looks like it's going to go ticking in towards those last 60 seconds or so. Robofin, I'd be interested to see. He was in the match for like, you know, two, three minutes, but I feel like he's picked up a fair chunk of kills. Unless he got, you know, lost the last couple ones here every now, now and again. Yeah. But yeah, if he spots an infantry in it, he just makes the infantry and it disappear. Exactly. Exactly. And I don't think we're going to see that last uh, artillery barrage, which is such a shame, because I feel like, you know, the the 152s, the 122s, either or, really, has a very, very good likelihood of picking off at least some of those vehicles. Yeah. It is pretty big caliber. You know, it's hard to find men of that caliber anymore. It is. Really is. But oh no, he's gonna move out of the circle if this hypothetical artillery barrage hypothetically gets off, which it theoretically won't. Well, I think the verbal friend is kind of going in there to play an R2D2 role, so it's like as the artillery shells will come in, he's gonna just snipe him out of the air, you know, so. <laughs> it's like playing missile command. Exactly, which in my head cannon, now that this match is over, is exactly what happened, and the verbal friend saved the lives of, you know, all three Germans. Um, KD, a little bit more obscene than I expected. I expected about a thousand, but 17, 16, 1700, not too shabby. Yeah, but I'd lost a lot of like heavy tanks. Like his Panthers went down True. without really doing too much. Panzer fours were going down like flies. Like he was taking heavy casualties up north. But I mean, even though he lost that match by quite a bit, like once again, he kept managing to push back. But Sir Daniels is by like the 20, 25 minute point of that match. He just mends the trade much more efficiently mm -hmm. and have that, you know, bigger blob of forces like keeping those tigers alive where he can just shut down birds like major advances before they can really consolidate into something more permanent. That certainly seems to be that way. And shockingly enough, the Bilbofin only picked up one kill. Oh, Honestly, shit. outside it, there is uh, four kills for one, there's five kills for another P4, and there's one, I think it was a T3476 Trolga who paid for himself and most of his comrades. Unfortunately- oh, yeah, one Camarati in the town, like in the middle point of the match. Yep. Yep, I was gonna say, unfortunately for him, he still only gets one potato for his weekly, uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> his, his weekly kind of ration of freedom. Uh, I, I, just a little bit of a tangent here, but I find it like, it really probably sucked for a lot of Soviet soldiers because after the war, because for like American or British soldiers, you like after fighting, after participating in the war, you went home and you got to live in the 40s and 50s, which were like a big economic boon. But you're a Soviet guy, and you after finish this terrible, horrific war against the Germans, which almost killed your country and caused millions of dead. You're still living in the Soviet Union in the 40s and 50s, which was a sucky place to live. Exactly. It's yeah. absolutely true, and it's one of those things that I think you can get, we, we joke about, but yeah, it kind of stinks there. Yeah, or if you like, a, you know, say something anti-political, you could get like thrown in a gulag or killed by an KVD. Like that's that's really sucks if you you know you know spent your blood, and, you know your you know young adulthood fighting for your country. But you know. I think it's enough without such optimistic talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a real, a real way to uh, bring a downer on what was a very lovely replay. It really, truly was. An appreciation yeah. to both these guys for bringing that, that to our attention here. Yeah. Um, fourth Panzer, not a terrible division. Just got outmatched over here in terms of the play that kind of happens. Um, yeah. Um, yes, sir. Now, Sir Daniels has played really well in forcing oil's important engagement to be close quarters. And T-34s and SU-76s are perfect 
in those fights as we clearly saw in that match. Absolutely. Absolutely. But folks, that's going to do it for us for this particular replay. Um, as always, uh, you know, Rang actually has been having some really, really interesting matches as, as well. So you want to check those out over on his channel. Um, but I think until next time, I'm Connell Work. I'm Rang Roo. Take it easy.